work. Um, so I'm contributing to quite a few of liquid-based open source projects. Um, okay. So um, so today I'll be talking a little bit about uh, liquid sidechain and uh, two projects I'm uh, working on uh, based on liquid. Um, so liquid is a, a for those not familiar with, uh, it's a, uh, a Bitcoin sidechain with a federated peg model. Um, so. It's based on the same Bitcoin code base, uh, but with advanced stuff like uh, one minute blocks, uh, confidential transactions, and advanced scripting. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, so here's an overview of you know projects building on Liquid today. Um, so we have a, quite a few uh, projects uh, from swaps to loans to you know dev tools, NFT marketplaces. Um, so I know more and more projects are building on Liquid day after day, month after month, so this is really exciting times. Um, so within these projects, I'm contributing the Bitmetrix, uh, which is an, uh, you can think of like Uniswap, but on Liquid Network. So it's a constant product market maker, uh, built on Bitcoin script. Um, so pretty much like other AMMs, you can uh, swap tokens in between or add liquidity to get maybe a few basis points. Um, so it's again entirely based on Bitcoin script. Um, so you can uh, swap any Liquid-based uh, token. Um, so Liquid, you can issue your own token as well on Liquid, and you can go ahead and create your own token pair pool and uh, trade against it. So it's uh, based on a concept called covenants. So covenants are uh, smart contracts, but in Bitcoin terms. Uh, so so it's pretty much like uh, an advanced Bitcoin script uh, that can enforce sort of rules and constraints or in our case, like how a liquidity pool is operating under which rules. And one of the rules we're enforcing is the, the constant AMM format, right? To make sure the, the, the liquidity remains the same. So we can introspect the transaction content and make sure the, the liquidity remains the same, unless someone is adding or removing liquidity. So um, it is based on uh, recurring covenants, so meaning that uh, the state is floating across inputs and outputs across transactions up to 50 uh, transaction limit in the mempool. Um, so it's so in our case we are building we are having uh, four covenants uh, in a transaction uh, to make this work. Um, so from index zero to uh, the third index. Um, we have a uh, flag covenant. Um, so flag covenant is a uh, covenant that holds a unique uh, asset uh, with one unit supply, identical to pool. Um, the LBTC covenant on the first index holds LBTC liquidity. Um, and the second one, a pair token, uh, that could be any liquid issue token like USDT or LCAT or UREX. Um, and the third one holds the LP token liquidity uh, with a predetermined supply. So. Um, so these are of type anyone can spend. So if you're interested in doing a swap, uh, you have to monitor the network and find the, the latest state. <laughs> and you have to construct your transaction, you uh, put the inputs that you take, so you provide your funding input. And on the output side, you create the, the new state. And each of the, the covenants on the input side are enforced to uh, validate their new state on output side in the same uh, index. And then you also create the swap output, change output, and you're pretty much good to go. And the next guy uh, spent from the new state you constructed, and this goes on and on. So um, here's a brief comparison between Bitmetrix and Uniswap. Uh, so we have a crying unicorn here. So you can think of more like this, like a comparison between Liquid or versus Ethereum, or like maybe UTXO versus account model. So uh, in Liquid, we have we have confidential transactions and users can make uh, confident privacy preserving swaps. So maybe to be more specific, uh, when you make a transaction, um, so no one can differentiate a change output and a swap output in a transaction. And you can split into multiple pieces. So uh, to even make the, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, you know, the uh, obfuscation even larger. Um, and this is not the case in EVM models since everything's about everyone um, by design. So this is a, one of the benefits uh, being built on Bitcoin script uh, or in a UTXO model. On the other hand, we have a concept of gases interaction. So, um, so meaning that you don't need to hold, have the base asset, LBTC, in order to make a transaction. Uh, whereas in an EVM model, you have to have the ether 
to pay for gas, and gas is only paid in ether. So if you don't have ether, but like an asset like USDT, you have to go ahead and get some ether from exchange, uh, which is I think a big hurdle in onboarding new users. So in, in our case, you don't need to hold a base asset. If you have a token, you're pretty much good to go. So the fee is subtracted from the token you have. <laughs> so this, this, this works well with swaps, but this can work with uh, vanilla transfers as well. Um, so I think it's a frictionless UX for many people. On the other hand, we have a, a theoretical concept called zero constant transition. This is a very theoretical concept and this may not work in practice. But basically, uh, in a UTXO model, you can hand over zero bitcoins to someone. In an EVM model, you have to wait a confirmation uh, to, to, get, to get your balance state updated uh, prior to sending to someone else. So in theory, you can make zero comp swaps. Um, so we can enforce the first in first safe by script. Um, but this may, this may not work well <laughs> in, in practice. But on the other hand, um, Due to some initial design choice in the ERC20 token standard in the Ethereum uh, model, you have to approve a token first uh, prior to doing a swap. So perhaps some of you experienced it if you used Uniswap recently. Um, so, you, you, so it takes two transactions. Um, in, in our case, tokens come within the transaction serialization. So they, they bake into protocol and liquid. So, um, so if you have a token uh, using Bitmetrix for the first time, you're pretty much good to go. Um, so you don't need to deal with this complication. So I think when we add all these three, four together, I think it creates 10x better reasons uh, for someone switching their behavior, I believe. Um, yeah, got any questions? Really? All right, so there is another project I'm continuing called Bitscript Wizard. Um, so it's an open source ID for designing Bitcoin and Bitcoin script. Um, so um, pretty, pretty much uh, you can write on a script on the left side and you can see the stack execution on the right side. Um, and you can compile your script to byte code, um, and you can, uh, if you're running an elements node, um, you can uh, decode to ASN, and you can uh, get the addresses derived from the script. We, we have um, elements, we have segwit, uh, nested segwit, and paid script hash, so we can play around it. Um, so uh, at the moment, we have Liquid has few opcode editions on Bitcoin, and they these enable introspection and covenant functionality. Um, so checksick from stack uh, 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 with along with uh, checksick can and sort of uh, give you the covenant functionality. You can use introspection, so the man manipulation of course to manipulate the data by introspecting. And we are uh, having a new or I mean even further uh, new opcode additions in the in the upcoming uh, liquid tab script upgrades. Um, so we don't have any certain uh, deadline for this, but. Uh, so you can even build uh, covenants even more efficient. So, so it consumes less in operations and bytes, so you can introspect whatever part you're interested in a given index. And you can use tap tweak to introspect the output script, and you can use pretty cool uh, cryptographic operations and 64-bit, uh, again, operations. So, <laughs> so thank you, everyone. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I can now have uh, your question lightly. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, question, any questions, anyone? Yes. It's Bitmetrics in production? Yeah, we're actively building it, uh, and we are releasing the initial version uh, once the taproot is activated on Liquid. Uh, so this could happen later this year, maybe early next year. Um, so it depends on the, uh, again, taproot activation schedule. Yes. Are you able to do covenants with confidential transactions without running into size limits and script issues on Liquid? Or do you, do you need tap script to do that? So could you do that again? So how are you doing covenants with confidential transactions? Like so yeah, um, so the, the liquidity, uh, the, like the, the four covenants I mentioned, uh, the, the, liquid, the LBTC covenant, the USD covenant are public okay. and confidential. It's public to everyone, only the change in the swap options are confidential. Okay. Any other questions? I have a question because oh, of course. I'm not a cryptographer. Uh, since the amounts and assets are blinded, how are you able to like match the uh, the orders? Yeah, so it's um, so it's just like uh, Pedersen coin. When here's, here's where Pedersen coin comes. I'm not all the way into much into the the specs, but. Um, so you cannot uh, do inflation within a transaction. So it's always the, the, the sum of outputs and inputs are always the same. I mean, always the same. Um, so maybe Andrew can maybe uh, give more details about it. Yeah. 